Goed. Now I have to talk English. <laughs> uh, maar volgens het shirt ben ik een genius. <laughs> genius. Ja. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I want again after so many weeks of uh, free time. Maybe some stuff has been sinking away. Or how do you say that in English? Not weggezakt. <laughs> so I want to go. I'm going to share something from uh, the review. You find the review here in in each chapter. These are all the files for the chapter, and this is Hebrew. At the glance, kun je dit zien, Leonard, of niet? Die grote vergroting? Nee. Dus ik moet hem even openen. Oké. Okay. Waarom doet hij dat? Even zien, moet ik even nieuw share uh, die. Dat is een heel stuk beter. Ja, even zien. Die kan uit. Waarom die nou update die laat zien? Ga weg. Zo. Uh, hoofdstuk 1. Uh, die, deze documenten staan dus in. Hoofdstuk 1 begint eigenlijk met de introductie van de letters. Nou, dat hebben we al heel veel gedaan. Alle wet kimmel, gimel. Dalet he vaf sain get tet jut. Kaf la met mem nun samig ayin. Pet sade kofre shin. Sin. Of zij doen hier sin en shin. Taf. Uh, 22 letters, maar op 23 schrijfwijzen. En de sufiet vormen. De kaf sufiet, de mem sufiet, de nun sufiet. De pe en de tsader sufiet. Vijf sufiet vormen. Dus vijf uitgangen die veranderen. Vijf letters die veranderen als ze het woord afsluiten. En dan heb je nog de gudrols. Uh, gudrols zijn de letters die achter in de keel worden uitgesproken. Dat is de alef. Dat is de he. Dat is de get. Dat is de ayin. En de reis. Vaak wordt die erbij genoemd, omdat die ook achterin staat. Uh, op een of andere manier. Oh, I need to speak English. Sorry. <laughs> Leonard, you should warn me. I was speaking in Dutch. Sorry. Sorry, guys. Komt al zo uh, soepel aan. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking about the letters in the Sufit forms. And uh, I was now talking about the gutturals. The Alef is a guttural. The he is a guttural. The get is a guttural. Ayin is a guttural. And then you have resh. Uh, so you have the gutturals and resh. And also, what you also need to learn is this group. I need to go down to the tough. Yeah, it's a little bit. The tough is also part of this. The tough, these letters, sorry, these letters change their pronunciation from bet to vet from gimel to gimel dalet to dalet kaf and gaf with a g pe and f, the f sound and the distinction between tough and tough is very slow only people native speakers might learn this or know how to distinguish them bit Okay, this is the review of chapter one. Let's go to chapter two. Chapter two. Where are you? Over here. Chapter two. Chapter two is about the vowels. We have a categorization in short tone vowels, long tone vowels, and historical long vowels. The Patach is a small line. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Oh, I hope you can see this. The patach, the A as in after, 
de Segol, de I as in bed, de Girek, de I as in bit, de Kametschatouf, O as in top, en de Kibbutz, de U as in put. These are the short tone vowels. Patach, Segol, Girek, Kametschatouf, Kibbutz. Then we have the long tone vowels. You have the kamets in father, the tsere as in day, the e sound, and the cholem. And then you have the historical long vowels. Those are these. Kamets he, so that is an a sound together with a he. The tsere yud, the E sound together with the yud, the girek yud, the I sound together with the yud, the cholem vav, the vav, uh, the the cholem with the vav connected, and the shurech in flute. So that is the u sound where the vav is also carrying the u. And it. Uh, most common use of the cholem vav is in at the beginning of a word. Syllables begin with a consonant and have one vowel. Open syllables have one consonant and one vowel. Closed syllables have a consonant, a vowel, and a cl closing consonant. So in a syllable, in a letter grape, The open syllables in, in Hebrew general, there is on, in every syllable, there is at least one consonant and one vowel. And if it's closed syllables, there are two consonants and one vowel. Um, the point is that um, sometimes with the historical long vowels, the seriyut is considered a vowel. So when you read it, You might think, oh, there is another consonant in this syllable. No, it's not. It's part of a vowel. And then you have the fertig patach, that is the uh, the patach that comes. Uh, normally, the, the 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 sound is after the consonant, but this one is before, like the word ruach and noach. You can see it over here. You see that the patach is before the letter, ruach. So it's very confusing my, maybe, but um, this is called a furtive patach because now it looks like if the last syllable starts with a vowel and we just learned that syllables always start with the consonant. Yippee. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next chapter, chapter three. Look at a glance. A simple shiva. A simple shiva represents a reduced vowel or a historically closed syllable. If it's pronounced, it is called a vocal shiva and translated as a lifted E. If it's not pronounced, it is a silent shiva and not represented in transliteration. Shiva is vocal under the first letter of a syllable or after a long vowel. And these are the rules you need to remember because when you see one or two shivas in a, in a word, you need to remember, is it at the beginning of a word, then it is vocal and after a long tone vowel. So when the tone is long, then the shiva is vocal. When it is a short vowel, then the shiva is silent. You can see it over here. Bnei, Bnei Elohim. And this is, oh, sorry. Shomerim. You see here, this, you can see, uh, may, maybe a little bit bigger. There it is. This is the Cholom Vav. And we learned that a cholom vav is a historically long vowel. It's a long vowel. That means that the shiva that is following the long vowel, it is vocal and it is not 
the end of a syllable. So you do not pronounce this as uh, shomrim, like you could say, you could do, can I, uh, let's have a look if I can, oh, other side. Oh, can I do this? Oh, that's well held, Dick. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is to show you over here, it's very sick. This is not good. If you see a Shiva over here, and you must look uh, to the vowel before it, if it's a long vowel, then the long vowel ends the syllable and therefore the shiva is at the beginning of a new syllable and therefore it is vocal and it's this second syllable is also open cv and because here you see a rim consonant vowel consonant so so it's shomarim Let's go back. Yep. When you, instead of a simple vocal shiva, a compound shiva is a combination of shiva and a short vowel. A compound shiva can you find in three forms with the A, with the E, and with the O sound. So you have four vocal shivas. One vocal shiva is only the two dots. I hope I could make this right better, but I'm not sure if I can do this. No, that's not what I want. Sorry guys, try to find something. And what can I do? Okay, when you see this here, this is uh, what I was saying. There are four kinds of shavas that are vocal. The first one is at the beginning of a syllable or the word or after a long vowel. And the others are compound shavas and it's a shortened A, E or O sound. Then you have the inseparable prepositions where you have a consonant together with the shiva, le, be, and que, and the inseparable prepositions are directly connected to the word. In Hebrew, the inseparable preposition is directly connected to the noun or to the word. And uh, because you don't see, uh, how do you say that? What is the lit, uh, lit word? The article, yeah, that's because you don't see the article, ha, then it translates for a king. Remember, we, we had the special occasions where uh, le hamalech, where the article is before the mem, then it's for the king. But when, the, when there is no article, it is automatically for a king. Okay, the rule of Shiva. When two vocal Shivas occur together at the beginning of a word, the first changes to a Chirek or to the corresponding short vowel preceding compound Shiva. If you hear this for the first time, you say, what, is, what on earth are they talking about? <laughs> two vocal Shivas at the beginning of a word. Uh, you see over here, this is le and is this shemuel. So when you put these together, you get lishmuel and not le shemuel. This is the reason for, uh, this is the rule of Shiva. Two focus Shivas occur together the first changes to a Chirek, and you see it over here, the I. 
Lishmuel. And with Elohim, of, uh, this is uh, Edom. Le Edom becomes Le Edom. So it, or it changes to the Chirek, or it changes the vowel to the vowel of the compound Shoah. I hope you can still remember that we did, did this in the class, or else I encourage you to look at the videos. Now let's go to the fourth chapter. Accents. I don't know why my Adobe is doing this. Every word has a primary accent. Okay, let's see if I can, uh, what can I do here? No, this is not what I want. Sorry guys, I tried to make it easier for you to follow what I'm doing. This is so big. I cannot change that. It's too big. Um, every word has a primary accent and many have secondary accent. Accents marks the stress syllable in a word and provides sentence punctuation. So what they say is that when you have a word there is always an accent. If the word is only one syllable, then that is the syllable with the accent. Normally in Hebrew, the accent is on the last syllable, unless there are markings in the word that tells you that the accent is not on the last syllable, but on a previous syllable. So when you find the, uh, the word like the varim, then the accent is on the last syllable and you see it over here. Oh, not that one. How do I do this? Like this. This is the uh, last syllable, normally carries the accent and the syllable that carries the accent is called tonic. The syllable preceding is this one, is called pretonic. And the syllable before that is called propretonic. You only need to know that there are names for the syllables and there are rules in pronunciation and spelling when the accent shifts in a word. So this is the, uh, how you say the, the way the syllables are named according to their place of the, uh, in regards of the accented syllable. The metek. Are you still there? Yeah. yeah. The metek is a short vertical stroke written beside a vowel to indicate a slight pause, ensuring that the vowel receives its full pronunciation. So uh, it's Ha-Adam, Chachma, Ya'akov. And the Metek points out, you cannot swallow this Kametz. You need to pronounce it. So you need to pronounce the kames or the tsere, with long vowels before the vocal shawa. Then you have the makip, a hyphen-like line that puts words together. You see it over here. This is the makip. The accent on the last word of the compound, often causing reduction of a vowel in the first word. So we, that's why we need to understand which syllable carries the accent because now the, ex, the accent changes and thereby you get vowel reduction. And you see it over here. This one becomes 
this one. See, in lesson two. The Tzere over here becomes a Segol over here. It goes from long to short, vowel reduction. And it is due to the Makep over here. The Kamets Gatuf is a short vowel in a closed unaccent syllable. So when you see the T sound, the T sync um, uh, picture in a syllable and it's unaccented and it is closed, then it's, it's not the A sound, it is the O sound. Okla, this is Davar, this is Midbar, and this is Achela. So on, only in the first one, it's called Okla, because it is a closed syllable, Aleph, Kametschatuf, Kaf. It's a closed syllable. So this is a silent Shiva. When it's the T sound, the T signal is in an open syllable or in an accented syllable, it's the Kamets. So remember, unaccented, closed syllable, the T signal, the T symbol is an O sound in an open syllable, in an accented syllable, or when the metek is there, then it's a kamets. And the metek was a symbol, the long, the, the short line over here, the short line over here. Maybe a, big, a little bit bigger, you can see better. This is a closed syllable, unaccented, because there are no accent signs in the, in, the, in the word. That means that the accent is on the last syllable. The first syllable is unaccented, it is closed. Therefore, the little T symbol is an O. Are we getting there? We're almost at chapter four. Uh, this was four, we go to five. We're busy with a review of the lesson because we paused for quite a few weeks and it's always good to get a short recap of what we've done and learned. There we are. <clears throat> I put you guys over here. The Dagish Lerner is a dot written in one of the begat kefat letters and it changes the pronunciation when the darkish lerne is there it means that it is the hard pronunciation with the bait is it very obvious bait and weight gimel and gimel soft g and zachte limburse here then you have the dalet the kaf and the gaf pet and the fat and the tough and the zaf. So it's a T sound or a Z sound. When preceded by a vowel, these letters are written without Dagish Lerne, often indicated soft. So the Dagish Lerne in the Begat Kefat letters is only at the beginning of a word or under other special circumstances. The, as soon as there is a, another consonant or a vowel, well, it, it, when there is a vowel over here, the Kamets, before the Begat Kafat letter, it loses the Dagish Lerne, and therefore you say Av and not Ab. And therefore um, we say Abraham, but it should be Avraham. And that's with a lot of things. We say Tohu and Bohu. But the case tohu wa vohu is it? It's a V sound. And the word is bohu, that's correct. But in Hebrew, in the, in the Genesis, in the first chapter, tohu wa bohu is not said. It's tohu wa vohu. It's a V sound. And remember, when there is a vowel, 
the, dark, the dot loses, the darkest letter goes out, and the pronunciation of the begat kefat letter changes. Okay. Dagesh forte. Here again, that's why we need to understand which are the gutturals and raish. You cannot double the gutturals and raish. So when you have a dot in another letter, like the shin, or here the kaf, is this uh, a kaf or, because the kaf is one of the begat kafat letters, this one, you see it? It has a dot in it. But you can see it. there is a vowel, the girek is preceding, oh, the vowel is preceding the kaf with the dot. That means it is a closed syllable. Therefore, it must be a doubling and not a pronunciation. That's how you remember. When you see a dot in a begat kafat letters after a vowel, it doubles the letter, the consonant, and it does not change the pronunciation. Any questions about this? It's begat kafat and dark is lane and dark is forte. Okay, I continue. Under certain conditions, two words closely connected pronunciation, conjunctive dagesh for them may be written in the first letter of the second word. Malcha, malka, queen. So it's malka. And this is the dot in the in the hay. Yeah. You see this? Kamets hay. It's not kamets hay. This is a, a hay that needs to be pronounced. That is what the mapik is for. So when you have a dot in a hay at the end of a word, you might say, well, the hay is a guttural. What is the dot doing in a guttural? We know that it cannot be a doubling. The dag is for the any letter except the guttural. So when you see a dot in a hay, it has a different meaning. Also, the, the hay is not a begat kafat letter, so it doesn't change pronunciation. Therefore, it tells you something different. It tells you that in this case, the kamets and the hay is not an historically long vowel, as you could see over here. Kamets hay, kamets hay is a historically long vowel. So when you go to this word and you wouldn't have the dot, you could say malka, but then you pronounce queen. But when you put the dot in the hay, you get her king. The, pronounce, the, the, the writing is almost the same, but this little dot tells you it's not queen, it's her king. And that's quite a difference. That's why you need to, to understand these basic rules. That if you see a word like this, Malka and Malka, you <laughs> must understand that the dot means her king and not queen. Okay. The article is prefixed directly to the word. So there is no loose article in the street. <laughs> the article is always connected to a noun or a vowel or another word. Before words beginning with strong letters, the article is a hey with a patach. And the next letter is doubled. Hamalech, the king. Over here. Hamalech. So what you get is CVC, CV, CVC. I wish I could understand how to write here, but. Oh, maybe over here. Does it work? Yeah, look, that's what I was looking for. Syb syllable division, CVC, CV, CVC. That's what you get over here. Ga me leg. Ga me leg. So the article, the hey, is the hey. 
de patag en de dagesh forte in de next uh, word, uh, letter, de next consonant. Dit doesn't work, of course, when the next consonant is an alef, an ayin, an he, or a get, or a resh, because these can't be doubled. So the dagesh forte, that is part of the article, is gone. So remember. One, the he, the patach, and the dagesh forte, all three are part of the article. Now we go to the sixth lesson. Oh my gosh. Oh, I need to stop annotate. Or else my mouse doesn't work. <laughs> and I need to clear it up. <coughs> yep, it's gone. All right, lesson six. Quiescence letters. Yud, Vav, He, and Aleph are so weak that under some conditions they lose their consonantal value and blend with the vowel preceding them. Aleph is silent at the end of a word, of a syllable, and the vowel before it is long. Reshit, over here. And we all know the first word, b reshit, means in the beginning, the aleph is still there. It's hanging in there, but has no consonant, has no vowel in it. So they are connected to the preceding vowel. That means, if I go to annotate, that the aleph here is now connected to the vowel. It's not an historical long vowel. It's a quiescent letter. And it, this works for the Aleph, again, the He, the Vav, and the Yud. They can go quiet, that's hence quiescence. They go quiet. And raise this all. Lots of lots. So you have here, let's put this a little bit higher in a different color. Here you have Elohim. Does anybody know how this one was called? You can answer. Huh? Anybody? I can't hear you. Oh, listen to me. It's very difficult to hear. Where are you? I just saw it. No. Is it in this lesson? No. Not in. Which lesson was it, guys? Historically long? No, it's not. Three. I think. Is it three? Lesson three. Compound Shiva. There we are. There he is. This is a goal. The tsere is a long, the sugol is short, and the compound shiva, 
with the Tsere, uh, with Segol, is very short. So Elohim, not Elohim, but Elohim, Elohim. But when you put Le before it, when you put Le before it, you do not get Le Elohim, but you get Lelohim. And you see over here, the Aleph has lost its own vowel and is connected to the preceding vowel. So you, you see over here, well, let's make the eraser. The Aleph, oh, I'm still erasing. The Aleph is now connected with the Tzere and it's called Lelohim. It might be useful to re review the lesson because this is sometimes difficult to remember, but we will get there. This was this, this special lesson that he had with this very difficult uh, picture of all these special occasions. Do you remember? Let's wipe this all out. Uh, where's my eraser? Oh, there's my eraser. Da -da -da. Okay, stop, annotate. Gutturals. So the Aleph, the He, the Chet, and Ayin, and the letter Re prefer A class vowels. Cannot be doubled by Dagesh Forte except for Resh, take and take a compound Shawa. When the article is joined to words that begin with a weak letter, the following rule applies. Words with he and get do not have dargage for the following the article. Maybe it's better to not to tell this, but to review this lesson uh, next time because it, it was quite difficult. I understand that when I just read it, it says nothing. So, but this is a review of this chapter and I can read the text. You can read it for yourself, but know that because the whole issue is it is about gutturals and rays and the fact that the article has a darkish forte in it that changes the way vowels are placed or gone or whatever. That is the reason why you need to understand what the gutturals are because when you put an article before it, something changes. The, the get over here Get cannot take a, a, a doubling, so it's ha chokma. And if you would do the doubling, you would get something like this ha chokma. But you don't get a double get. You don't get that. So it's ha chokma. Eraser. Words with yud and mem often do not have dargish for Well, this is too simple, too too difficult to, to just uh, read the text. We're gonna review the, the, this uh, specific lesson uh, maybe in a few moments. In several prepositions and nouns, it's all there. And I mean, when you read this, you you might think, uh, well, we have learned this but I can't remember it anymore. <laughs> and that's quite normal, but you will pick it up when you start looking at it again and doing the exercises, you will get there again. So trust me or trust yourself in this matter. Um, so I would like to do this lesson, uh, articles before weak letters. I can do that. How long is it?
It's 11 minutes, yes. Have you all missed our friend? Charles? Okay. Uh, wait a minute, did I? No, I did not. For me, it's also a long time, so I forgot things. I forgot now to put the audio on, so now you can hear it. Article okay, before week letters. Thumbs up. This okay. module will look at what happens when we attach the article to words that begin with letters that cannot double. If you remember, our article has three parts. We have the consonant, he, the vowel, which is a patach, and following that we have the doubling of the next consonant, or the gemination of the next consonant. So this is a dagger's forte, number three parts. This is the part that people tend to forget. But what happens if the letter that's sitting here, the first letter of your word, can't double? Then other things need to happen. And we've seen two groups of letters that do that. One is guttles and resh, and the other are the coal mine letters. Now, the rules for attaching articles to weak letters are complicated. Um, at least I find them a bit of a mess. And I've tried to simplify this as much as possible. The best way I could think of doing this was simply to put it all into one chart, and we'll go through it. So it'll look a bit intimidating at first, but we'll walk through it. So here's our chart. Now, let me talk you through this. Note, first of all, how this chart works. On the left here, we have the four types of things that happen. In some cases, the doggish will simply be omitted. In other cases, we'll have what we call implied doubling, or virtual doubling. In other words, we're going to say, OK, we don't see any doubling, but we're going to pretend it's happening for a reason. Another is compensatory lengthening. This is where the vowel that precedes the guttural changes, it lengthens, to compensate for the fact we don't have doubling. We've seen this before. We saw this in the case of quiescent aleph. If aleph loses its vowel, effectively making the word shorter, then the vowel previous to it will tend to lengthen. It'll lengthen to compensate. And finally, there's something called harmonization, where the vowel under the first root letter will harmonize with the vowel under the article. So the four categories of things that can happen. Now, in the first one here, we notice we have a yud and a mame. This is what happens with a couple of the coal mine letters. The rest of these all concern guttural's and resh. And, okay, so why don't we jump right into the chart here and look at the first section. So dagesh is omitted. In the case of a mame or a yud, now, these are only two of the coal mine letters. It doesn't happen to all the coal mine letters, but the mame and the yud, remember, those are, are part of the coal mine mnemonic. If they're followed by a vocal shava, they will drop the dagesh, no dagesh present. The vowel under the article stays the same. This is normal, ha, with the patach. And here's an example. Yiladim means children, and it starts with a yud. You put the article on it, the he, and the patach, we would expect the yud to be doubled, but in fact it doesn't. Now, there is an exception to this rule. The exception is that if these, the yud and the mame, are followed by two of the gutturals, the ein and the he, then in fact the dagesh will stay. Again, the vowel is, is normal, so there's no change there. So here we had hayiladim, or hayladim, I suppose I should say that, where the dagesh is no longer there in the yud, However, Yehudim, Jews, the Dagesh is there, if you can see that. And that's because this Yud is followed by He, following this exception here. So, Dagesh is omitted with two of the coal mine letters, except for this exception, where it stays. Let's look at the, uh, the gutturals, the gutturals and Reish. Now, the guttles and rage can be divided into two groups, or guttles can be divided into two groups. The he and the hate are called your strong guttles. They're ones you pronounce. The aleph and the ayin 
are either you either don't pronounce them that strongly or they uh, aren't pronounced at all. The ayin can be pronounced and but is a weak weak guttural, considered a weak guttural in comparison to these. And racist group there. Now what happens with the strong gutturals? The strong gutturals, you don't get gemination, you don't get doubling, which is the case for all these here. The only case where you actually have doubling here is this exception to the coal mine rule. Okay, so otherwise what we're dealing with here are cases where you don't have doubling. So it'll be no all the way down this column. No dog is present. Now in the case of the hay and the hait, there's no change to the vowel either. So hechal, which means temple or palace, you add the article and it's just ha hechal. Or chokma, which is wisdom, you add the article and it's just ha chokma. You don't have any change to the vowel and you don't have the dagish. So why do they call this implied doubling? They call this implied doubling, while in this case it's dagish omitted. What's the difference? It looks the same, doesn't it? What's going on is this. In this case, you have a vocal shava under your yud, your first root vowel. Here you have some other type of vowel. When you have a vocal shava and you add the article, the article takes that yud and makes it a closed syllable. So now this yud is part of the closed syllable. So you have CVC, C V C, a closed syllable, with a short vowel, and that's permitted. In this case, you have a consonant and a vowel, and that's it. That's this doesn't take this as its uh, next consonant to make a closed syllable. You have an open syllable, and the open syllable CV has a short vowel. If you remember back to our rules of syllabification, CV unstressed should have a long vowel. In this case, it has a short vowel up here. The patak stays. And that's a short vowel, and that's not permitted. So what they say is, okay, we don't see a dagus there, but really there is doubling happening, we just don't mark it. So I suppose you could say this is a CVC with an implied C there. <laughs> Final C. So that's why they they call this implied doubling or virtual doubling, while this is just dagus omitted. Let me uh, get rid of this other thing here. Okay, so strong gutturals produce implied doubling. Weak gutturals produce compensatory lengthening. Again, you can't double them, but what you get is a lengthening of the vowel that, that precedes it. So with ish, for instance, meaning man, you have ha-ish, where the ha the patach changes to a comet. There's no doubling here, and so it lengthens there. Similarly, ir, which means city, changes to ha'ir with, with the with the comet rather than the patach. The, the patach, like this, lengthens to a comet. And here's an example with reish, regel, meaning foot. Again, you have the comets there. So, compensatory lengthening. Now, in both these cases, the strong and the weak gutturals, you have an exception. Exception conditions are here. For the strong ones, if you have a patach, if you have a kametz following these or a chataf kametz, you get he. And that sounds quite different. He harim, the mountains, as opposed to ha harim. He hacham, the wisdom, or sorry, the wise man, this was the wisdom. He Chodashim, the months. And down here, if you have a comet under the ayin, just the ayin, you also get the same exception. It goes to He, so you have He Avim, the clouds. Now, the exceptions here occur with comets. When comets is under the guttural, in these two cases and also here, and here you have a Hataf comets, and it produces the same exception. So note this here. There are conditions where you'll get He which sounds quite different than ha. Finally, there's something called harmonization. Harmonization happens with an accented, when the first letter of the word is an accented ha or a. So a he with the comets or an ayin with the comets. And what happens then is that 
Let's look at some examples here. This, the vowel under the first root letter, in this case the aleph, will harmonize to match the vowel under the article. Now what I suggest here is simply just to memorize these four words and note that harmonization can happen. Um, so edits becomes ha'adits, the land. Har, ha'har, where they're both both comets is. In, in all these cases, they're, they're both comets. Ha'am, the people. Ha'avel, the iniquity. And this will tend to happen for words that are either monosyllabic or have the accent on the first syllable because part of the requirement here is that the first letter be accented. So, what do you do with all this? What I would do is this. There's a lot of information here. I would keep a chart like this handy. A chart like this is available. And um, when you encounter them, glance at the chart to refresh yourself as to what category you're dealing with. Note that with these two coal mine letters and the guttles and race, you won't get doubling, with one little exception. Note that the vowel can change. He is the most prominent. It'll look quite different. It'll sound quite different. Ha will look different, but probably not sound different because you say it the same as these. And so note that the article can have he and ha. That's why I've colored these here. They're different. Be familiar with these categories. Doggish can be omitted. You can have implied doubling, which means that it's omitted, but we're going to pretend it's there. Compensatory lengthening, we've already seen. A vowel that precedes. Uh, what should be doubling lengthens in order to compensate for the fact that this isn't doubling and harmonization where you get both vowels in the article and the first root letter harmonizing to be the same thing. Well, I hope that isn't too bad. Um, I don't know how to make it any simpler than this. When you take a look at this lesson and say, my gosh, did we, di did we do this all? <laughs> yes, we did. Um, my my um, idea was today was to get a, a recap of what we've been looking at. So um, next week we will start with chapter seven again to do the noun and the sus and susa, susot, susin, susataim, you m remember. <laughs> but it's... Um, I hope you guys um, are still able to do some exercises. Um, the exercises help you to get into the flow again, because it's been a long time since we uh, st stopped. And um, I hope you uh, still enjoy meeting us together. And it's for me, it's a, a stimulus to do it and um, with you guys. And uh, I like to do it. And uh, I hope you do too. So next week, it's now five to nine. Next week, we start with uh, lesson seven. If you have any uh, thoughts about past lessons, just take some lessons, look through the, the Vimeo class and, and look at the lesson, say, well, maybe I, I do that one. But better, of, better than anything is do some exercises. Take the time to write some of the things out and understand why things are happening. And that will help you tremendously in understanding the written language of the Bible. Thank you very much. And I see you next week. God bless you. Bye bye. Dag Marianne. Dag Vera. Hey, je bent er ook nog. Dag Donald. Dag Anna.